Hi, so for this video, okay, so ito yung siguro retake ko kasi kahapon nabura yung video kaya yung sabi ko sa inyo na medyo nakakainis lang. Okay, so fast track, um, so dapat, uh, dapat nasa week, uh, I think nasa week 6 to 10 na tayo dapat, pero habol tayo, okay, kaya natin. So for this video, we're going to, um, uh, crash course tayo sa work energy and power, so, okay. Also, try to abutin natin itong impulse momentum. Uh, total madali lang naman yan. It's very simple. Okay? But, um, but before I proceed with the video, uh, balik natin assignment nyo. So, sa assignment nyo is maraming tatanong, uh, Sir Ikal, ano ba dapat ang unit? Okay. So, unit dapat dito is, as is, pounds lang. So, baka natatanong sa inyo, Sir, eh, yung pounds, eh, hindi naman yan weight, eh, hindi naman yan hindi naman yan forcer eh. eh mass yan sir eh di ba parang kilogram ganun actually um when we talk about uh, uh pounds and then pounds in in physics uh dapat tinatanong nyo talaga ang dapat tinatanong nyo muna yung teacher nyo or sarili nyo sir is it pound mass or is it pound force okay kasi may dalawang klase kasi so but in this case, so kapansin nyo naman na F, diba? F, which means force, diba? So, ibig sabihin, this is pounds na force, which is pound weight, uh, pound, pound force, okay? Hindi siya mass. So, obvious naman. So, ba't yung ba'y ko-convert sa Newton yan para kayo ng baloo? Uh, Pahirapan nyo sarili nyo. So, as I, um, so, kung bibilisan ko lang, uh, okay, so, ang technique lang naman sa ganito, uh, okay? So, technical naman sa ganito, ano lang naman. So, gaya na sinabi ko sa inyo, remember the summation of forces. Okay. So, saan na natin, uh, 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 pink na lang. So, kukunin nyo ang, ang, e ang x and y. Kukunin nyo ang x ay y. Okay, lahat ng mga y, uh, y components. No? Then, x components. Okay, ito na kulay green. Okay, so pretty obvious, no? So, summation of forces along the x-axis, and then, of x component, sorry, and summation of the y component, forces in the y component. So, papansin nyo dito, everything that is going to the left, which is negative, and owing everything that is going to the right is neg uh, positive. So, this, uh, in this case, so itong F1 and then F2, okay, F1, so that, sorry, so this is negative, F2, 1 x component minus f 2 x component plus f 3 x component kaya maliliit na x sa ilalim as for the y um, again everything that go, uh, goes up is positive positive yan and everything that goes down is negative so this 1 is positive so positive f 1 y component and this one is negative, so negative f, uh, 2y component, and then this is also negative, negative f, uh, 3y component. So, so the resultant, or the resulting, the resulting force is equivalent to the summation, uh, square root of the squared of f of x component, summation, uh, total, yung summation, then summation of f of y component. And the angle, obviously, is r tangent of the opposite so that's uh, summation of fy summation of fx so ganun lang so ganun lang so ito lang naman yung medyo maawat dyan yan yung yan yan yung medyo maawat now hindi na lang baka simple yan hindi kasi may mga trick pa dito medyo may mga gulo gulo pa konti take for example this one okay so papansin nyo walang, sa lahat ng sa tatlong binigay na force dyan uh may mga angle yung dalawa, ito wala. So, napakadali lang naman eh. Kung kukunin yung angle na yan, oh, yan oh, angle na yan, angle theta na yan, madali lang naman kasi may binigay na triangle, which is 12 and 5. So, if you're going to go back to trigonometry, your Sokotoa, so the angle, this one, the angle between 5 and 12 can be determined using so katoa so tangent, oh, tangent, tangent theta is equivalent to 
TOA opposite. So, which is 12 over adjacent. So, theta is equivalent to R tangent of 12 over A, uh, 12 over 5. Now, okay? So, that is equivalent to, uh, I think, 60, 61 then? 67? Oh, 67 point... Oh, okay. So, the angle between uh, this one, so the angle for F1 is actually 67.38 degrees. But the question is, is this the, ito na ba talaga yung angle na gagamitin? The answer is no. Kasi, all, all you have to remember is, is you're going to read the angle from the x component, uh, from the y axis to the uh, pa counterclockwise. And yan, yun na pagbasa ng angle. Okay, gets nyo? So, ibig sabihin, this 61, okay, burayin ko na lang para madali. So, which means that the angle here, the angle between uh, this one is 180 degrees minus the 67.38 degrees. So, ito yung angle dyan. So, that is equivalent to 180 minus 67.38. Uh, so, that's 112 degrees. Okay. 112 degrees. Point something. Oh, point 62 nga eh. Okay. So, yan ang angle dyan. Sir, ikan, ito rin ba? Hindi magagamitin angle? Hindi rin. Kasi, itong angle na yan, hindi yan ganyan. So, magiging 180 yan plus 40. Kasi, ang isang ganito, ang isang straight line ay 180 degrees, di ba? Kung alalahan ninyo. So, ibig sabihin, 180 plus 40, okay? So, 80, 90, 210. Uh, 220. So, 220 degrees yan. Ibig sabihin, hindi yan 40, kundi 220 degrees. Ito naman is 360, since ang buong circle is 360 minus 30, so 330 ito. So, lang ulitin ko lang sulat. 330 degrees. So, so after yung magamit yung mga, yan, nang gagamitin yung mga angle, then, <laughs> di ba? So, para mas maayos. So, din yun na, again, if you're going to review it, the value of the x component is equivalent to f of x cosine of angle theta. And then f of y component is equivalent to the force multiplied by the sine of sine theta. So, yun ay mga gamit yung angle. O, yan, 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 mga yan. It's quite simple. So, baba, ba? Uh, kailangan ko ba ituro yan? Kasi, actually, naturo na yan sa high school. O, so, parang review na lang ito. Okay, now, we proceed with work power and energy. And for this one, for this slide, we're going to talk about uh, work and kinetic energy first. Pero work muna. Okay? So, recall, review lang tayo. So, as we already said, force is equivalent to the mass times acceleration, which is force. This is the second law of motion of Newton. And we already know that the force, the unit for force is Newtons or N. Now, meron akong tinatawag na parang sabog version. Sinasabog na version. So, sinasabog ko yung, yung mga yan kasi I have to understand. So, yan kasi yung technique ko para maintindihan yung, yung physics behind. Okay? So, Newtons here actually came from uh, MA, right? And the, and the unit for mass is kilograms. And the unit for acceleration is meter per second squared. So, which means to say that Newton is also equivalent to kilogram meter per second squared. Okay? So, tatandaan yan. So, everything, anything that you see as kilogram meter per second squared, that is Newton. Alright? So, work is described as what is accomplished by a, an action of a force when it acts on an object as it moves through a distance. Okay? But before this one, uh, review ko lang ko yung ulit. As I mentioned in my first video, uh, people back then in the times of Galileo and even before, they said that force causes objects to move, right? Means moving. Okay. But when Galileo, uh, what? But when uh, Newton came, he said that force 
is also force can can cause an object to move and also it can also make an object stop okay so it can also make an object move or stop which is really interesting if you're going to look at it because you can use a force to move an object and you can also use a force to stop an object diba? amazing so the formula for this one for work so the unit for work is joule okay mamaya tingnan natin kung bakit joule so the formula is the work done is equivalent to the force multiplied by distance so or displacement sorry so it means to say that if you're going to look at this one when the displacement is zero obviously there's no work so magkakaroon lang ng work kapag may movement or may displacement okay so can also say that f of x okay so nagiging f of x yan kasi this is the f component for example if you are uh, if you are going to pull a box like this using a string and since hindi ka naman tanga para mahimila ng ganito diba hindi ka naman per, hindi ka naman ganyan hihila ng wire diba so eh, ganito ka kasi eh malaki ka kasi eh so ito yung kamay mo oh, diba so it means it means to say that you are making an angle okay and this is your force so ang ginagamit dyan ay hindi ito ang ginagamit ay ito so ibig sabihin sa formula ng work done ang gagamitin nyo ay ang f of x component at hindi ito kasi usually ito ang binibigay sa problem tapos binibigay ang angle o, diba na gets nyo na binibigyan ko ng trick ha binibigyan ko yun ng sekreto binibigay sa problem ito yan binibigay sa problem and then nagbibigay ng angle and then calculate the work done so huwag kayong tanga nagagamitin lang agad ito huwag kayong gagawin yun okay huwag kayong syusunga syunga nagagawin yun so hanapin nyo muna ang f of x component then sa kanya siya gamitin okay kapag inclined or hindi pantay okay yung paghila wala naman eh kita na naman sa picture eh hino naman diba okay so this one huwag kayong malilito dito kasi nalipat lang yan dito so technically speaking the work done is f cosine theta times delta x so naalala nyo naman diba yung f of x component yung formula ganito o oh, diba parang nire-review lang kayo okay so that's work done so it's the same here you know? same lang din naman dito so work is a scalar quantity which means that it doesn't really care about the direction why? why is it a scalar quantity? because again it doesn't really care about direction as long as there is a movement okay so kung pumunta ka man ng kaliwa pumunta ng kaliwa uh, kanan it doesn't really care as long as may work <laughs> but it can be positive or negative okay it can be positive or negative because again as I already mentioned before ang importante kasi ay tinatawag na reference reference point okay so if you move here this is your positive displacement and then suddenly let's say uh, positive displacement let's say this is two no you move two two uh, three steps and then you decided to move again the box uh five no? five going to the left negative so you, go, you decided negative five so it means to say that your displacement is not negative five it's not negative five it's not positive three but it is negative five plus three which is negative two so this is your displacement so this is what you Wow, sir, medyo nakakalito, sir. Medyo nakakalito. Okay, nagiging nakakalito lang yan kapag hindi nyo alam yung concept ng reference point. Kaya, nung unang video pa lang, tinuro ko na agad sa inyo, uh, what is reference point? Okay? So, usually, pag mga tinatamad kayo, gagamitin nyo positive 3, gagamitin nyo negative 5, which is mali. Dapat ang gagamitin nyo is negative 2. Because this is the final position and you are using displacement. Again, displacement is the shortest path. Okay? From the original point. So, negative 2. Okay? Gets nyo? So, an object like this, your work done is equivalent to a negative one. So, so may negative sign. Kasi nga, yung displacement mo is a negative. Okay? So, positive kapag positive in displacement. You're going to the right or you're going to the left. Uh, yeah. So, as long as positive siya, hindi siya negative. So, negative if you have do, if you're doing it in the opposite direction. So, hinila mo siya, tapos binalik mo siya ng palayo. Ganun. So, negative. And zero if it's perpendicular. Okay, so medyo tricky. Okay, perpendicular. Ano po yun, sir? Okay, so explain ko. Example, this is your box. This is the ground. Okay. 
Let's say, yung perpendicular, di ba? Ganyan, perpendicular. Line X, uh, line Y is perpendicular to line X. Which means, may 90 degrees dyan. So, ang sabi dito sa slide is, zero ang work kapag the force applied is perpendicular. Which means to say that, ta ganyan. <laughs> Parang weird lang. So, there will be no force like this. Uh, there will be no work because hindi naman siya hindi naman siya gagalaw, di ba? Kasi yung force mo ganito. Pababa. So, parang inipit mo lang yung object mo. So, there will be no work done. So, zero also when the displacement is zero. Obviously naman, kapag hindi ka gumalaw, wala kang work. So, walang movement, there's no work. Yun lang. Okay. So, more uh, explanation here. So, the direction of the force is in the same direction as the object that moves. So, this is a positive work. Okay? So, positive work yan. Positive. So, if the direction of the force is in oppo opposite direction that the object moves, then the work is a negative one. So, the work is negative one because you are driving, you are causing an object to stop. Okay? Kasi may break. Kalaban ng break. So, it means to say, there will be a time, okay, magiging negative yung work niyan because there will be a time na mag, ang work mo ay magiging zero kasi, ibig sabihin, kapag ang work ay zero, kapag object na to ay guma, gumagalaw dati, kasi siya ay stop na. Nag-stop na siya. So, it means, kaya negative. Okay. So, you're causing an object to stop. Okay. For this one, the direction of the force is perpendicular to the direction that the object is moving. So, there is no work done between the earth and the moon. So, it means to say that the earth and moon does not really have a working relationship with one another. So, kasi kung merong work, kasi, remember, if there is a positive work here between the earth and the moon, then, yung, yung moon na yan, ay bibilis ang bibilis yan. Kung i-imagine ninyo, pabilis ang pabilis, ang pabilis ang kasa, ah, di mo na maintindihan. <laughs> Mababaliw na yung moon. Okay? What if, sir, kapag negative naman yung work? Kung negative yung work, narating ang time na wala. Uh, stop na yung moon. So, ibig sabihin, kung ano yung itsura ng moon dito sa earth, yun lang din naman ang itsura niya. So, hindi na nagbabago. <laughs> Parang ganun. Hindi siya gumagalaw at all. Kasi, there will be a time na magiging zero yung work niya. Ibig sabihin, hindi <laughs> na siya gagalaw. So, the object doesn't move. Again, the work done is zero. So, when you exert a force on a wall unless gumalaw yung wall no pag umusog yung wall ibig sabihin may work done na yon may positive work na yon <laughs> pero hindi ka naman ganoon kalakas sorry <laughs> okay next slide so again the simple the the most uh the basics in calculating uh, or in doing physics work is by doing the free body diagram so actually yan ang titingnan ko free body diagram Nabibreduan ako pag estudyante walang free body diagram. So, ibig sabihin, ang galing-galing niya. Galing-galing niya mag-solve ng physics. No? Parang, wow, hindi na niya kailangan i-imagine, i-drawing yung, <laughs> yung nangyayari. Ganun siya kagaling. So, kung hindi ka naman ganun kagalingan, ibig sabihin, nangopya ka lang. Hindi mo naitindihan. So, bibigyan ko ulit kayo ng trick. Okay, so, now, work done by varying force. But before we proceed with this one, bigyan ko lang muna kayo ng orientation muna dyan. So, Kanina kasi, ang, ang ina-assume natin is that our force is constant. For example, if you have a block like this, tapos hihilahin mo, no, oh, wait lang, then hihilahin mo siya, yeah, no, so sinasabi dyan, ang force is constant. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ka napapagod. <laughs> hindi ka napapagod, hindi ka lumalakas. But, if you compare this one with with this scenario, what if inclined yung plane, no? What if Okay, tapos ikaw dito. Pupush mo yung box na yun pataas dito. So, the question is, are you going to exert are you going to have the same force? Hmm? The answer is no. Why? Why sir ikal? Okay. Kung napapansin nyo, no, the more na tinataas yung isang object, the more na nagiging mabigat. Okay? Mas the more nagiging mabigat ang isang object, the more na tinataas mo siya. As I already said, with that by saying, ang height dito, iba, 
height dito mas mataas, dito may pinakamataas height. So, ibig sabihin, ang force mo ay papataas. Tama? Or I mean to say that the force that you are required to exert para may taas yung box pataas is pataas. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya constant. So, how are you going to deal with such uh, scenario? Diba? Okay? So, dito na pumapasok yung tinatawag natin integration. So, dito na masasubukan yung ano nyo, integral calculus nyo. Okay? So, the formula for the work done is actually equivalent to the, you know, ayan, yun na, no? You, you divide the curve into small, smaller rect, uh, rectangles. Pero merong simpler version yan, ito. Yan, a simpler version ito. Yan, simpler version. So, which means to say that you are integrating the force uh, with respect to the distance traveled. So, balikan natin yung kanina. Okay, yan. So, integrate daw from initial point to the final point. So, brain ko lang to. So, balikan ko yung drawing. Gawin ko yung drawing ulit. Okay, and this, this is the box. And this is you pushing the box. Okay, so <coughs> so as a, as we mentioned here, the work is equivalent to the integral from the first position x naught to the final position. Then the force cosine theta uh, change in the displacement x x uh, delta x. Okay. So, <coughs> it means to say that this is the initial point, this is the final, uh, parang maliktad yata, this is the fi initial, <laughs> bagoy ko line drawing ko. Okay, so this is the initial point. Okay. This is the initial point, x not, and this is the final x1, xi. Okay. So, Sir, ikal, paano natin ikaw-compute yan? Paano po? <laughs> okay, so, let's say na, you know, um, the formula or the equation of the line here is uh, y is equals to x. So, ibig sabihin, this line, uh, the force that you are required to, to do this is actually given by the equation x equals to y is equals to x. So, for example, okay, so this is the distance x. This is the force y. So let's say that the at at initial point which is one. No, let's say na at one meter. Let's say at one this meter to at one meter. The force is one newton. Then two meters. Two, three, four. Okay. Napansin uh, napansin na ganyan ang ganyan ang curve or ganyan ang curve. Actually, hindi siya curve, eh, line eh, no? Line. So, if you're going to review your uh, geom uh, analytic geometry, kunin natin ang equation niyan. Okay. So, equation is y is equal to mx plus b. Okay. So, it means to say that if you're going to draw this line, automatic zero agad yan, bagsak yan. So, ang ating y, uh, y coordinate, uh, y intercept is zero. So, that leaves us with y is equals to mx. Now, what is the slope of this line, by the way? Okay, so the slope of the line is equivalent to the delta, delta y over delta x. And that is, let's say, 2. Okay, so you the value of 2 minus 1, and then 2 minus 1. So, that is 1, right? So, y is equals to x. So, basically, the, formula, the equation of this line is y is equals to x. Now, salpak natin this equation. So, the work done is equivalent to the, uh, is equivalent to force, uh, force theta, zero. Pero, dito kasi is magiging, ano na siya, uh, force delta theta f x, f of x. Force. This is your force, no? So let's say, ah, varying force kasi ito. Wait lang, marikan natin. Okay, tama. 
So, let's say this is the equation. So, magiging x, f of x is ito eh. f of x yan. So, we will remember that f of x is equivalent to y. So, y is x. So, magiging x, delta x. From, let's say from 0 to, okay, wait lang. Okay, so let's say na ang ramp natin ay 12 meters, and then ang height niya ay 3 meters. Okay, so the question is, what is the distance we're going to use? Ito ba yung distance na gagamitin natin papunta dito, or ito papunta dito? Okay, by cutting lecture. Okay, so ang gagamitin distance ay hypotenuse. So, hypotenuse. So, ito yung gagamitin natin distance. Yan yeah, yeah, distance na yan. So, since hindi given sa problem, gagamitin natin ng uh, Pythagorean theorem. So, the value of the distance is equivalent to the square root of 12 squared plus 3 squared. No? So, that's 12.36 or 37. So, the distance here is 12.37. Yan, meters. So, ito yung gagamitin natin. So, that will be uh, from 0 to 12.37. So, hindi na yan magiging delta x kasi nag-integrate na tayo, magiging dx yan. Okay? Actually, delta x is dx din naman eh. Delta x is also equivalent to dx because basically you are using derivatives. So, if you're going to simplify this one, so the work will become uh, integral of x is 1 half x squared evaluated from 0 to 12.37. As you remember your integral calculus, the formula for evaluating uh, definite integrals is upper minus lower. So, 1 half 12.37 squared minus 12 zero squared. So, sagot is ito lang naman. So, the work done is equivalent to 1 half multiplied by 12.37 squared. So, 76. So, 76. So, the answer is 76 joules. So, the work done is 76 joules. So, baka nalito kayo, no? Bakit x ang ginamit is vegan? <laughs> <laughs> Ito kasi yung function na yan eh, oh, f of x. <laughs> yan yung function. So, that's force. Pero ang ginamit natin ay x. Okay, kasi nasanay tayo na x ang ginagamit sa mga equations natin. So, weird lang naman kasi pag ginamit natin f. So, okay. So, ganun naman. So, that's that's the energy required. 76 joules. So, if you're going to push the box from here to here. Okay. So, so, try natin kapag yung simple formula lang, no? So, work is equivalent to Fb, F delta x. Force is, let's say, uh, about force. <laughs> Wala palang force, no? Oh, yeah. Wala palang force. Back at yung formula. Ha, ba't na bang iniisip ko? Hindi <laughs> pala pwede dito. <laughs> Hindi to applicable kasi nga, ano tayo? <laughs> kasi tayo ay varying force, ano ba yan? Hindi mo pwedeng gamitin yan kasi fixed force yan eh. Ano ba naman? So, ika lang syunga syunga mo. Ulitin ko lang ha. Hindi mo pwedeng gamitin yung formula na yan kasi fixed force yan. <laughs> fixed force, okay? Remember, fixed force. Eh, hindi naman fixed ang force natin. Okay, nagets na. Kaya hindi applicable yung formula na yan. <laughs> Hi. Okay, nalito ako. Okay, okay na. So, next. So, that's it. Um, mm -hmm. Nandiyo masaya, no? So, ibig sabihin sa mga ganitong klase yung problem, ang binibigay ay uh, yung equation mismo ng slope. Okay. Pero, depende naman sa, depende naman. Pero, kung ako kasi, ang gagawin ko is, bibigyan ko kayo ng graph. Okay. Kayo ang bahala maghanap na, for example, may mga points ako dyan. Kayo ang bahala maghanap ng equation. Wow. Lagot kayo. So, ganun lang naman. <laughs> Kanina. Hindi lang naman. 
So, i-review nyo lang yung analytic geometry nyo. So, that is a work done by varying force. Okay, so, next is work done by varying force which is spring. Okay, so spring. So, sir, bakit varying force ang spring? Okay, so that's a, actually a question, a uh, good question. So, bubuti lang tinanong ko. So, varying force ng spring kasi nakadepende yung force ng spring sa magiging compress niya or pag-expand niya. Hindi siya fixed, in short. Okay? Yeah. Kaya nakadepende ang force niya sa kanyang, yan, sa kanyang pag-compress pag, ano, pag at sa kanyang pag-extend niya. So, kung gusto mo mas malaki, malaking force, syempre, i-press mo yung spring na yan sa pinakadulo, no? Para, shoop, malaki yung force. Malaki. So, nag-gets nyo ba yung idea? So, kailangan nyo ng imagination dito no? para mag-gets. Okay, so this is the force exerted by a spring. So, the, the force exerted by the spring is given by the formula negative kx. Okay, so, huwag kayo makukonfuse sa negative, no? So, tatandaan nyo na lang na ginagamit yung negative kapag yung force ay na-exert ng spring. Okay? Pag yung spring mismo ang nag-exert ng force negative yan. Kasi sinasabi nila na negative ang, ang negative ang force ng spring kasi siya ay restoring. So, sir, bakit negative? Bakit hindi positive? Kasi tatandaan nyo, kapag positive yan, ibig sabihin yung spring nyo, from original point, haba ng haba. <laughs> hindi naman ganun ni. Kapag kinompress nyo yung spring, Diba? Pag kinompress nyo yung spring, babalik siya sa original position niya. Kaya negative yun. Negative displacement. Which means that the force is just going to go back to its original form. So, contrary to the force that is exerted like this. You know, for example, if you press mo siya ng ganyan, meron siyang force which is negative kasi babalik siya. Uh, yun, nag-guess nyo na. So, ganun po yun. So, okay, malilito ha. Tandaan nyo lang, kapag yung spring ang nag-exert ng force, negative yung gagamitin yung force. Pero kapag hindi, positive yan. Okay? Kapag kayo nag-exert ng force, positive yan. Okay? So, again, it's varying. So, ibig sabihin, as I, as I mentioned, if you're going to do the graph here, the force of a spring depends on this kind of graph. Okay? So, depende yan sa k of x. So, ibig sabihin, kapag may maliit lang ang pag-press, ang pag-compress ng spring, maliit lang din ang force niya, obviously. Kapag impress nyo yung, kapag sinagat-sagat nyo yung spring ang sa kaduluduluhan niya, malaki din ang force, very obvious. So, yun ibig sabihin ng graph na to. Okay? So, that is just the force, no? Pero para pag work, okay. So, para pag work, ibang usapan naman. But let's try this one. So, let's try to solve a problem. So, a person compressed a spring. So, a person compressed the spring implies that the force is, the force is equivalent to positive, you know, positive kx. Tama? Force compresses the spring a distance of 5 cm, which requires a force of 100 newton. So, okay. So, letter A. Calculate the amount of work which is required for a person compressing the spring. So, ilan yung force na kailangan ng tao na yun? Ilang force yung kailangan niya? Uh, about work pala, sorry. Work. So, ilan yung work? So, for this one, okay. So, if you're going to go back to the formula, F is equals to Kx. Ang kulang dito ay <laughs> yung tinatawag natin na spring constant K. Now, baka naninibago kayo, baka wala sa high school nyo, tanawin natin, unit of spring constant. Okay. So, the unit is newton meter. Okay. So, that's a unit. Newton meter. So, the unit for new, uh, spring constant is newton meter. So, ano po yung spring constant na yan? Okay. So, explain ko lang. Meron kasi mga spring na maniit, no. Merong mga spring na medyo ma uh, malalaki. Malalaki. At may mga spring na sobrang laki. So, it is difficult to say that the spring constant for for one for every spring is the same. So, kaya diyan po papasok ang spring constant kasi bawat spring ay may kakaibang property. So, yung property ng spring is determined by the constant k. So, it means to say that you will have a smaller k if your spring is soft and you will have a bigger k if your spring is large o malalaki. Okay? So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng spring constant k. So, for this one, for this problem, alamin natin yung spring constant ng spring constant ng spring na to kasi hindi natin siya alam. 
sir. Sir, ikal, kailangan pa talaga intin, kailangan ba talaga namin, sir, malaman yung spring constant, yung spring constant ng spring na yan. Okay? Actually, kailangan yung malaman kasi una sa lahat, na-compress nyo ng 5 centimeters yung spring gamit ang 100 newton na force. Okay? So, ang tanong, ilan yung work na makagawa nyo? So, going back, ano ba ang formula ng work? So, ang formula ng work na binigay kanina is, di ba, uh, work is equals to F delta X. The problem with this one is para lang to sa mga objects na hinihila-hila at para to sa mga fixed na forces. Hindi siya applicable sa spring kasi ang spring ay, again, varying. No? So, hindi gumagana ang formula na yan. That's pretty obvious. So, ano yung formula? So, napansin nyo kanina sa binigay kong example, no? Meron tayong one half, no? Napansin nyo to? One half? So, parang ganyan din ang kamuka. Pero, tanongin natin si Google. Work done by spring. No? Medyo na ako tinipe, eh. no? Work by spring formula. That is... 1 half k x squared. Okay? So, yan ang formula. 1 half k x squared. Okay? So, going back to the drawing board here. Okay? So, the work done for a spring is equivalent to spring is equivalent to 1 half k x squared. So, ibig sabihin, alamin nyo talaga yung k. <laughs> so, yan ang reason kung bakit. <laughs> So, since walang K, compute natin. So, we have force here, 100. So, ibig sabihin, uh, ang spring na yan na may constant K na hindi natin alam, ay na-compress siya ng 5 cm. Now, convert na natin yung 5 cm into meter. So, that's 5 cm multiplied by, there are 100 cm in 1 meter. So, magiging 0 0.05 meter. So, 0 0.05 is what's to K. And the new, ang unit niya ay Newton meter, ha? Okay. So, that's basically K is equivalent to 100 divided by 0 0.05 and that's basically 2,000. 2,000 Newton meter. Wow! So, ibig sabihin, ano, teka lang. Sir, so, paano natin i-interpret ito? In-interpret ang K na yan. Ang oh, laki pala na sulat. So, ibig sabihin yan, guys, a spring that has a K of 2,000 Newton per meter is in order for you to okay in order for you to to make a 1 meter compression okay na compress mo na siya ng ganyan okay para may compress mo yung spring ng 1 meter from its original point kailangan niyo ng 2000 newtons na force okay na gets niyo gets niyo na so ulitin ko lang so an an for example lang haba nito ay 10 10 meters no so, para may compress mo daw ang 10 meters na yun into, oh, sobang, sobang late naman yata. Ayan, kagawa ko. Let's say 2 meters, no? So, para may compress nyo yung, yung isang spring na yan ng 1 meter, kailangan nyo, oh, let's say, two, 1 meter na lang ito, kailangan nyo daw ng 2,000 newtons. Okay? So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng K na yan. Now, going back, the value of the k constant of the spring is 2000 newton. So the work done is okay, work done is equivalent to 1 half 2000 multiplied by uh, 0 0.05 squared. So work done is equivalent to 1 half is 1000 multiplied by 0 0.05 squared. So that's 2.5. So the work done is 2 Wait lang, check ko lang. Uh, so, ako. Yeah, so the answer is 2.5 joules. Okay, huwag nyo kalimutan yung joules, ha? Or 2.5 J. Okay. So, sir, ikal, kapag kinompress ba namin ng spring ng 5 cm na yan, using 100 Newton so force, kapag, say, okay, so, so example, kinompress, ha? Pag kinompress, Okay, from initial point. Ganun din ba, sir, ang work done kapag kapag decompression? Or let's say, for example, ito yung original point. Okay. For example, ito yung original na haba niya, tapos ang ginama nyo, stretch nyo siya para maging mas mahaba siya. Nang 0 0.05. ba? So, ganun din ba, sir, ang work done? The answer is yes. So, same lang. So, same, same lang.
sa compression or compression or extension same lang din so same same lang din work yan okay so that's letter a so the answer is 2.5j for letter a and let's try letter b so how much work is needed if the person instead stretches by 7 cm so from initial magiging 0.07 siya so the work done is equivalent to one half k constant 2000 multiplied by 0.07 squared so yun lang naman din actually nagpahirap lang kasi kailangan yung compute yung k constant eh so i hope na gets yung concept ng k constant no so the answer for the work is 4.9 joule yeah so i hope na gets na no kung ano yung kung bakit kung bakit hindi lahat tinagamit na ng work to formula is equal to f times d oh ganun kasi meron tayong tinatawag na varying forces so iba na yung mga work formula doon so naging one half chu chu na so, uh, one half kx squared one half uh, ganun basta nagbabago na siya so okay next slide is work okay work energy theorem okay so dito natin na-encounter yung tinatawag na kinetic energy and the formula for kinetic energy is actually one half mv squared no, kung maalala nyo yung ano nyo physics nyo sa high school the formula for kinetic energy ke is equivalent to one half mv squared and the unit for that is also joule right energy kasi eh. so joule okay so <clears throat> okay check natin kung talagang joule no so sorry kal joule ba talaga ang unit ng Actually, uh, so joule ba talaga ang, energy, ang unit ng kinetic energy? So sabi natin, uh, mass is kilogram, tama? And then velocity is meter per second. And then is squared na natin yan. Squared, squared. <laughs> okay, so mukhang uh, newton. Uh, tama, joule. So ang labas niyan is, okay, meron tayong kilogram meter per second squared. So meron tayong, tadaan, Meron tayong kilogram meter per second squared, tama? And we already know what that is. And kilogram meter per second squared is newton. So, meron tayong natitirang isang meter. So, that's times m. Alright. So, newton meter is joule. Wow, Sir Ikal. Medyo naguguluhan na kami. Okay. So, kanina, kilogram meter per second squared is newton. Ngayon, na meron tayong times meter, that is actually joule. Okay? Joule. So, it means to say, Joule is Newton meter. Okay? Ke can never, never be negative. Mm -hmm. Bakit K is never be negative? Why? Okay. Velocity is a, velocity is a, a vector quantity. Tama. And then, mass is a scalar quantity. But it says here that K can never be negative. Ah, okay. Because this is the work work done. So again, as we already said, there will be no work if there is no change in direction. Uh, there is no change in displacement. And we already said. Okay, so work is can also be negative, right? No, so major weird lang. No. Ah, I see. I see. So the reason that the, the kinetic energy can never be negative, can never be negative, is because of this formula. So it's a change. Basically, it's a change from the final to initial. Okay. So it means to say that you can only have a kinetic energy if you have initial to the point, uh, initial to final. Kapag merong ka movement, so gumalaw. So kapag gumalaw, so hindi ka talaga magiging so magiging zero lang talaga ang kinetic energy hindi siya pwedeng maging negative kasi ang indicator indicator mo lang naman ay pag gumalaw yung object so yun pala yun <laughs> weird lang okay so so we are already done with uh, force we're done with energy by the way ang nag-discuss nang sa energy dito, dito, dito is kinetic energy no so in the next video uh, potential energy naman or PE na pag-usapan natin so for now, power. So power. Okay. So kailangan tayong maintindihan to no kasi EE tayo. We always use power sa EE. And in order for you to understand the physics behind power, kailangan natin to intindihin ngayon no. So the formula for power is equivalent to the work done per unit time. So we already know that the unit for work is joule, tama? Ah, uh, yeah, joule. And that actually joule is equivalent to newton meter times meter 
Tapos sinabi dito, oh, per time, per second. So, ibig sabihin, joule per second, that is watts. Okay, watt or watts, no? Joule per second is equivalent to watt. And newton meter per second is also equivalent to watt. Pero most common is joule per second. So, ibig sabihin, direct, so ibig sabihin, watt or en or power is how many energy per second. No? How many energies per second. So, that's power. So, it means to say that, for example, if, if a light bulb the light bulb yung pangit ang drawing ko baka malaswa, baka iba na maisipin mo ano na lang uh, ano ba <laughs> o, uh, TV na lang if your TV has 35 watts no, in power so ilang joule per second yan so ibig sabihin 35 joules per second so ibig sabihin umaandar yung TV nyo using 35 joules of energy per second. So, question is, kung pinandar nyo yung TV na yan ng 60 seconds o 1 minute, so ilang joules yun? So, obviously, 60 seconds <laughs> times 60 times 35. So, that's how many joules you're going to need. So, joules, energy. Okay? So, 35 joules per second. Now, let's see how many energy we can get. No? Uh, how much energy we can get from food no okay Ang sabi dito pagkakain ka ng bacon and a stick calorie pala ito okay so sabi dito kung pagkakain ka ng tubig 5 no 5 calorie so, convert natin yung 5 calorie to joule. Okay. So, bakit kilo? <laughs> so, kilo yan eh, no? Joule na lang. Diktad. 5 calorie. Ay, naku, kilo, kilo, kilo calorie talaga. Sige, divide na lang natin. 5 divided by 1,000. 0. Point, 0. 0.005. So, so, that's 20.97 joule. So, ibig sabihin, <laughs> ibig sabihin, yung tubig na yan ay meron siyang equivalent energy of 20.92 joule. No? So, Oh, pretty weird. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, yung water mo na isang litro, meron siyang 20.90, ilan yun? 92? Joule. So, ibig sabihin, para mapa mapaandar mo ng isang segundo yung TV mo, kulang pa yung isang litrong tubig. <laughs> so, imagine nyo ba? So, ganun, ganun yan. Parang, uh, what? Parang weird lang. Anyway, so, ganun yung concept ng power. So, try it example, no? Gamit na example. So, for example, um, saan ba maging applicable itong power na to? Okay. So, ito na lang. So, let's say, meron tayong uh, box. At ang bigat niyan, o mass niyan, mass niyan is, let's say, uh, 1,000 kilogram. No? Tapos, hihilayan natin siya. Pataas punta sa second floor na bintana. So, sa bintana siya papadaanin. Now, kailangan, ang sabi ng so, since engineer ka, sasabihin mo uh, hindi, hindi ako gagamit ng tao para buhatin yan. Gagamit ako ng gagamit ako ng motor para paikutin yan. Yan. Tapos, nakakonek yan sa kuryente. Nakakonek yan sa saksakan. Yan. Tapos, yan, saksakan ng bahay. So, nakakonek siya. May, may wire. Pupunta sa saksakan. Ito yung motor. Okay. Tapos, ang taas ng, ng ang taas from ground papunta sa bintana, sabihin natin ang taas niyan ay may natin na 15 meters. Okay. Second floor eh. So, itataas natin yan mula dito papunta sa taas. So, let's say na lang na ano. Yeah. Let's say 15 meters. No. So, ang mga yari, ang tanong. Okay. 
so since we are talking with power okay we're talking about power and we already know wattage and electricity so the question is how many watts uh, how many much watts yung motor okay so para mabuhat itong 1000 kg na na ano man yan gano kalaki yung motor or ilan yung watts uh, di ba di ba yung mga motor natin naka depende sa watts yan or sa rating actually hindi watt eh horsepower eh horsepower kasi yung ginagamit sa mga motor pero convert na natin sa watts remember that 1 hp is equivalent to 0.745 yata 745 ba yun 1 hp 2 watts yeah Oh, 745.7 oh, mali ako <laughs> 745.7 mali 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 uh, 1 HP is equals to 0.745.7 uh, watts oh, yan ha so gano kalaki yung motor para mabuhat nyo yung 10 kilograms na yan so ilan oh, isipin nyo okay. so using the formula for power lang okay so tinan natin yung mga formula for power no So, formula for power is uh, uh, ito, ito, ito. Hmm. Hmm. So, meron tayong height, meron tayong ganito. So, huh, from initial to final point. Anong formula ang gagamitin natin? Meron tayong distance or height, meron tayong mass. By the way, meron tayong G, no? 9.81 meters per second squared. At ang formula ng power natin is energy or work per unit uh, time. No? work per unit time so ilan yung work no work done so work can as assist at okay so may force tayo okay nice meron na tayong force so imagine in eh, tingnan natin yung work no so oh, may time tayo okay 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 so meron tayong meron tayong distance meron tayong mass no meron tayong gravity so ibig sabihin makakuha na agad tayo ng work so ilan yung work So, yung work done. So, obviously, that is um, that is that is gonna be force multiplied by the distance which is the height of the window from the ground. And the force is equivalent to the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by height. Nasusundan? That is equivalent to work. Then, work is equivalent to 1,000 kg multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by the height which is 15. So, 1,000 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 15. So, the work done that is required, the work done i, from uh, for raising the block, uh, for raising the package from 0 to, to 15 meters is 14, oh, ang laki, 147,150 joule. Okay. So, sir, paano natin ko compute sir yung ano, yung power? Okay. So, <laughs> gano ba? Paano ba? Ilan yung time, no? So, Hmm. Nagamit ba tayo ng time unit ng time dito? Ah, okay. So, nagigat ko na. So it means to say it means to say na ito yung work energy uh, work uh, required para itaas yung yung box na yan na 1000 kg ito 147 1150 joules so ganun kalaki Now Hmm Okay so kailangan natin ng time wala tayong time So balik ano natin balik tayo sa kin so para makuha natin yung time no kuha, pupunta tayo ng kinematics. Okay, pupunta tayo ng kinematics. So what is 
balik tarin natin. So, imagine nyo nandito na yung box sa taas. Ilan kayo yung time pababa? No? Yun na yung idea dyan eh. So, ilan yung time pababa? So, makukuha natin yan using um, uh, h is equals to uh, okay, kinematics tayo. Mga formula sa kinematics, balikan natin. So, review tayo. Kinematics formula. Okay, so kailangan natin ay time. Uh, pwede na ito, no? Ah, so, wala tayo initial. Uh, wala tayo initial, eh. Ang kailangan natin ay height lang naman. Ah, okay, ito. So, 1 half 80 squared. Okay. 1 half 80 squared. So, our height is equals to 1 half gt squared. So, hindi tayo gamit ang a kasi meron tayong g. Okay. So, the height is 15 meters. It's equivalent to 1 half. 9.81 and our time. Okay. Therefore, our time is equivalent to the square root of 15 times 2 all over 9.81. Okay. So, calculate natin. 15 multiplied by 2 divided by 9.81. So, the time is 1.8. 1.75 seconds okay so if you're going to drop this object from here to here the time will be 1.75 seconds now gamitin natin yan dito so what will be the power okay so the power is work per unit time and the power is equivalent to 147,150 joule divided by 1.75 seconds so power is equivalent to 1.75 that is wow laki naman <laughs> mali yata ako dito kasi sobrang laki Wa ay, and hindi naman mali Hindi ko sinasabing mali ah. Ang sinasabi ko lang is parang wala yata ang klaseng motor na ganito. <laughs> ang laki oh. So, you need 84,085.7 watts. So, that's basically 84 kilowatts. No. So, ilang HP yan o ilang horsepower yan. No. So, 84 divided by... 745 Oh, okay, wait lang. 40, 84 kilowatts. So, watts watts to HP. Okay, so nakuha natin watts ay 84,000 84805 lang. 84085.7. So, try natin lang HP yan. 84 Zero eight five point seven. Wow, eleven. So eleven horsepower ang kailangan mo. So you need eleven horsepower na motor para may angat. <laughs> para may angat yung box na one thousand kilogram. So you need eleven. So yung motor mo dapat daw ay eleven HP. Okay. So ang tanong na pinatay sa internet no, meron bang eleven HP? 11 horsepower motor Ooh, meron. Wow. Bueno, ito. Yan. So ganyan ang klaseng motor ang kailangan mo para maiangat yung <laughs> para maiangat 'yun, ano. So so, ganun yun. So, ganun po gumagana yung physics sa totoong buhay, no? So, actually, hindi naman siya actually totoong buhay, pero parang applicable din siya. Kasi, this is how you're going to use your knowledge use, uh, knowledge in physics and uh, physics to to use it to calculate things. Kasi, again, you are not studying philosophy. You are studying engineering. Diba? Engineering. So, engineers use this, actually. So, kaya tinuturo to sa engineering kasi we are... We are building things. We are uh, solving problems. So, for example, um, customer natin is merong siyang gaitong klaseng bigat, and then we are of, we are required to lift the object papataas. 
So the question is, so yun ang question dyan eh. So actually in practical application or in real life scenario, okay, so in real life scenario, bigyan ko kayo ng maganda example ha, para ma, para ma, ano kayo, para ma, uh, tawag dyan, para ma, inspire kayo para maging engineer o para in, para intuloy yung pag-aaral niyo ng science no kasi merong crane eh no merong crane yan tapos paano ba drawing pangit ang drawing ko yan tapos may gulong so meron kasi yang obviously na meron kasi talagang motor yan sa gitna meron yang motor sa loob na hihila kung ano man yan nasa taas na yan so considering the may, the, uh, the mass of an object is going to going to be lifted So ang tanong diyan, eh gaano kalaki yung crane na kailangan nyo? Oh, so yun yung mga tanong. So yun yung purpose, yun yung purpose ng physics, yun yung purpose ng physics and engineering. Kasi hindi kayo pwedeng maghula-hula-hoop, hula-hula-hoop dito. <laughs> Kasi <laughs> for example, ang bubuhatin lang naman ay 1,000 tap 1,000 kg pala tapos nagdala kayo ng sobrang laking crane, eh ang ang mahal-mahal ng ano niyan eh. Ang mahal-mahal ng renta. Okay, ang mahal-mahal ng renta sa sobrang laking crane. Kaya As an engineer, sasabihin yung sarili nyo, gano'n ba kalaking crane ang kailangan ko? Yung hindi naman ako matataga ng sobrang mahal kapag, bumil, kapag nag-renta ako ng ma- pinakamalaking crane kasi parang naman akong tanga nun. So, dito na pumapasok yung tinatawag nating econo- economics. So, so instead, of bu- instead of mag-renta kayo ng sobrang laking crane, yung overkill na crane para buhatin yung bigat na yan, considering money, hindi nyo gagawin yon. So, wakompute nyo, Ilan ba yung energy or ilan, ilan ba yung work required? Ilan ba yung power rating na required dito sa sa lifter na hindi naman ako mamumulubi sa sa renta. Okay, so naiintindihan niyo na ang bakit kailangan ng physics. So sana nagigets niyo na no. So meron pa lang application ng ganun. So sir Ical. So ganun po, uh, ganun po siya. Uh, okay, so sana nagets niyo no. So, sana magamit niyo rin at ma na stimulate ng konti yung ano nyo, imagination nyo. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this video. Sang oras na. So, mahaba bang usapan. Bye-bye.